I think I attached really quickly and that's what made me fall in love with him. Cause I think I ended up telling him I loved him. I want to say within a couple months, it was really fast. And he was like, <laughs> you know, he had to think about it before he could say it to me. And I, I don't remember when he said it back to me, but that made me respect him for that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think you want you touched on something very important that I think people don't know if they had uh, if they didn't have this kind of childhood, which is that one of the great tragedies of being victimized as a child by caregivers by parents is that you are robbed of somebody to love. You are robbed of somebody to love. And the hole in your heart is not just the crater of the stony, moon-like fist of the abuser, but it is the hollowness that remains when love has no object. I definitely can relate to that. And and it's it. my favorite song in the whole wide world is Queen's Somebody to Love. And I love it because the song is not... Can anybody find me someone to love me? That's not, he says, um, each morning I get up, I cry a little, can barely stand on my feet. Take a look in the mirror, cry, Lord, what you're doing to me? I spent all my years in believing you, but I just can't get no relief. His agony is not that he's not loved. His agony, our agony, I would argue, is we have no, we have all light and all paint and no canvas. No place to put the art of our heart. No place for the helicopters and parachutists of our highest affections, no place for them to land. They just splash into the ocean and vanish. And that's what I love about that song. Anybody find me? Somebody love? Can I find someone that I can love? And it's that chant at the end. Find me somebody to love. Find me somebody to love. It's, it's the chant. It becomes your heartbeat. God, can I find someone I can bestow the gifts of my existence on? Can I find someone to fall into and surrender to and merge with and finally get the sweet nectar of communion that we as a tribal species thirst for like air? That hunger for somebody to love is natural but challenging, right? Because we can throw love vastly ahead of judgment. I'm not saying this is the case with you, but it is a risk. Right? Definitely. Looking back now, um, I, my husband and I were really lucky that it turned out well because I jokingly say that I probably would have married anyone that treated me the way he did and he could have turned out to be a murderer, rapist. I mean, I just had really poor judgment because I was so... <laughs> that sounds really bad. I meant that I... Um, I no, I mean, no, no. <laughs> No, no, say it all plain. Don't worry about how it sounds. Fuck how it sounds. Well, we're, we're connecting, which means you and I talk to each other. Forget how it sounds. Forget the audience. You and I talk to each other. Well, look, you know from your childhood, I would assume that you know. I don't want to tell you your experience, but you know, Mara, that isolation is the chilling interstellar fiery moat of an abused childhood. And we're not cats. We're not amoeba. We thirst and hunger and yearn and live for, for connection. Uh, babies who are not cuddled, they die. Yeah. I remember growing up as a kid, how many times in my heart did I say to my mom, stop sucking so bad because I really, really need somebody to love. 
I'm not asking for perfection. Just don't be terrible at it. Give me some scrap, something to connect with, something to hold on to, something to shoot any kind of grappling hook into and pull myself up to the heights of love. Stop sucking and give me a chance to love you. And this is why abuse victims as children are so perpetually disappointed. Because we really, really want to love. And abuse continues to shred that hand that reaches out from our heart to connect. You know, if you... It's like there's a mousetrap with the cheese of love and we just keep reaching for it and reaching for it and reaching for it and it doesn't matter how many goddamn times that bar comes down on our knuckles we've just got to keep doing it that's what we do as a species we are tribal and the withholding of connection is the instilling of a vampiric hunger vampires are the metaphor for that kind of isolation as child they they can't see themselves in the mirror there's no reflection They can't stand the light of day. They operate in darkness. They manipulate. They're physically attractive. And they live by feeding off others. I'm not putting you in this category at all. I'm simply pointing out that everybody looks at how harmed the child is. But I think people miss most often what can in many ways harm the child the most, which is just not having a chance to love someone. Which is in many ways, the greatest height of human happiness, to love someone or something. I love the non-aggression principle. I love philosophy. I love ethics. I love the participants in this conversation. I love my family. I love my friends. What has been the greatest gift for me, which I will never take for granted, is that I have the capacity to now have honorable receptacles for the love I could find no landing place for as a child. God, find us somebody to love. This is why people turn to religion too. You can love Jesus. It is an outlet for thwarted love to turn it into the supernatural, to love ghosts and imagination and stories as if they're real. This is why people take refuge in in, in, in comic books and, and superheroes there's someone you can love someone you can admire someone you can respect and the degree to which people around you are untrustworthy and abusive and difficult and dangerous and selfish and hurtful is the degree to which your thwarted love will pour into other things dangerous things nations and, and armies and sports fetishes the yearning to connect if thwarted at home pours into so many pyramids and receptacles essential to the power lust of the greatest abusers so I'm I just that that hunger that hunger oh god find me somebody to love I understand it